It's a Monday morning. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. Let's quickly tap into a conversation that is still, I think, <laughs> quite relevant right now. Yeah. Of course, you'll remember that SA Tourism recently sparked an uproar with their recent near 1 billion rand Tottenham Hotspur FC <laughs> sponsorship deal, which continues to mount some criticism. Now, considering South Africa's continuous uphill battle with persistent load shedding and poor service delivery and high inflation, the debate about whether the Department of, of Tourism's budget should actually be cut and redistributed elsewhere does continue and so unpacking this topic with us today is financial advisor Freddie LaRue and ex-professional footballer and football coach and gym owner Ryan Buerta uh, of course we'd love to hear from you as well so do send in your thoughts via whatsapp voice note to 063-408-8863 gents happy Monday good morning good morning Hi, I'm sure when this news broke, it was with a wry smile that you were looking at us. All my mates have been loving this. Yeah. I've actually been loving this whole narrative because we're connected to the world. Freddie, welcome to the show. Great Thank to have you, so you here, my friend. friend. It's quite a fit little couch going on here. <laughs> um, clearly got the best people here. You obviously come from a financial background. It's difficult to look at this one because we feel that there is subtext that we don't know fully all of the facts going on here. And there might have been some nefarious back dealings going on. But on face value, a deal like this should have been great. The context of where South Africa is aside, what could we have benefited from this deal? Surely millions of English supporters coming to South Africa, coming to Cape Town. Why did this deal look good when it first broke? Exactly. So, I mean, on paper, it looks like a really good deal. South Africa, you know, with our tourism sector and our economy would really benefit from this. And I think pre-COVID, we suffered quite a lot, you know, in terms of COVID, our tourism numbers have dropped 50%. We have recovered in 2022, so the idea of bringing more people to South Africa to our shores, you know, boosting our tourism sector would be, would be great for the economy. Um, but is it the right way to go about it? You know, that's the question everybody's asking. It's a lot of money, a yeah. billion rand. Yeah. Um, but we must also remember, SA Tourism do have a mandate to promote South Africa overseas. Yeah. And English Premier League is one of the most watched football leagues in the world. There's yeah. eyes on, on all the teams. Tottenham Hotspur are quite a prominent uh, club. I think they're the eighth. Thank you, thank you for saying <laughs> that. Thank you, finally. <laughs> an expert. Yeah, 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 yeah. An expert to finally say it. it on the <laughs> so you must know. But I mean, they, they've got the, the eighth largest brand in, in, in football. Yeah. So from a viewership point of view, they would have a lot of eyes on them. Yeah. But in the context where we are now, is it the right way to be spending the money? Yeah, Timing is everything, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the big question. So, Ryan, I guess from a football point of view uh, and in the football fraternity and industry, how important is it then to, to acquire sponsorships or to promote brands? How does that, how does that fit into you know, it's, the it's a business. Image? It's a business. You know, we forget that, that sports is a business. You know, you're paying athletes to be there. You know, our coach at the Marseille League, which is the third league, mm -hmm. is meant to be the development league, you know, yet uh, the, 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 the league doesn't distribute any wealth to you. There's no money coming to the, the level really which helps to develop players you know you've got players coming from difficult areas can't get across to you and you can't really get them across to you whereas you go one level high nfd there's more money being paid psl a lot more money being paid so that wealth that amount of money for me could definitely go through the lower ranks help develop proper yeah. the football players properly get them understanding certain philosophies in soccer plus helping them education because you can't have kids just going to soccer and not finishing the education so you've got to try and combine both really so for me i'm seeing players at my level Falling out of school to try and make a career in their soccer. Not every football can be a professional the schools footballer. Schools don't support it. You've got to go Not at all. You've got to yeah. pull out. Yeah. You know? So, for me, at my level, I see a lot more need for some money coming to development. Case in point, Stephen Pinnock, Ajax. Massive. Ajax came here. Yeah. They started a club. Stephen Pinnock, one of the biggest players in the world as a result of yeah. that. Mm. And Ajax yeah. pulled out because of lack of development. The yeah. players weren't coming <laughs> through anymore. And they got relegated. Snake eating its own tail. So, mm. Freddie, obviously, this all came out before anyone was ready for it, but provisionally or conditionally, it had been approved by the board. What does that mean, conditionally? What conditions yes. were they waiting to, yeah. for, for blackouts to stop? Or what was the conditional <laughs> element exactly. there? Exactly. So the, board, the SO Tourism Board, they sat, they looked at this proposal. Um, as we know, it wasn't a unanimous decision by the board, but it was approved in principle, subject to certain conditions and getting other stakeholders on board. Um, but we could see once the, the news broke that it didn't appear that they had the support of all the different stakeholders. So, yes, getting the approval from the board was one step, but you got to get also the, the tourism department to get on board. Um, and then even the president, you know, got, got involved and he, you know, the, the statement and the from press. Him. Yeah, it was pretty ah. strong. No, the, press. See, the problem is they had to find another Spurs supporter on the board. <laughs> <laughs> like, anyone, anyone? And I believe that's one of the things. There's apparently something like 30 uh, Tottenham Hotspur 
MPs that sit in the UK. So, you know, that was a kind of a case that they were making. Say, oh, well, if we get the UK on board, you know, we've yeah. got 50 They're British MPs on, yeah. on, you know, they could be influential. Um, but yes, you know, we've got, to, we've got to understand, you've got to get the buy-in of the country, the taxpayers that are actually funding That's right. Us. And that, that was one of the arguments that was made by, you know, one of my friends who said, like, you know, you're taking taxpayers' money. Yeah. You're mm, saying exactly. this is the best way to spend it out there. And we don't necessarily all agree to it. And perhaps there was a major opportunity to have communicated this opportunity yes. in a much better way, to have yeah. informed the country. Put it out there. Put it out there. Not being leaked. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Not being leaked. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Well, Would this have happened if, if they'd suggested Liverpool, is what I'm saying? Unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. 0634088863. Let us know. We'll be back again with Freddie and Ryan shortly. It's my feel good Welcome back, you beautiful souls. This is proving to be well, one of the most enjoyable and meaty discussions we've had in a while. The tourism industry has been regarded by many people as being an elite industry, if you will, reserved for the privileged few. Mm -hmm. And this has only been reinforced recently with SA Tourism's recent very controversial near 1 billion rand Tottenham Hotspur FC sponsorship deal. Well, the debate continues. Absolutely. And of course, unpacking this with us, we've got financial advisor Freddie LaRue, an ex-professional footballer and football coach and gym owner Ryan Buerta. And of course, if you have any thoughts, please do share them with us on our voice note line 063-408-8863. Let's pick up the conversation perhaps, Freddie, with you um, regarding the fact that it was reported that a few high board members from SA Tourism, in fact, three of them, key board members, resigned yes. shortly after mm -hmm. the leaking of this information. What, what does that say to you and what does it say about this deal, perhaps? Yeah, and I mean, I think the most, the, the key aspect there is that there wasn't unanimous support for this deal. There were three board members, and like you mentioned, there were key board members. Cape Town Tourism uh, board member resigned, a very prominent uh, corporate uh, board member resigned, and they have many years of experience in the tourism sector. So you can see already within SA Tourism, there wasn't consensus around this deal. They, they quit and when they put out the statement, they didn't give reasons, but there were various reasons why they, why they quit the board. Um, and it's, yeah, it's quite disconcerting to know that they still went ahead despite the concerns that, that were raised by their own uh, board members. And it's a loss to, to SA Tourism to, to lose these key board members and they're going to struggle to find people to replace them and it will take time. So that is something, it's quite telling and obviously the, as the, the information got leaked, they, they did resign quite shortly after that. Maybe a protest, you know, in support of not going ahead with the deal. So that, I think, is quite a, quite a telling move. But it became very political. Yes. In a space where you, you kind of view tourism as a marketing function, not yeah. necessarily a, a political arm. Yes. But everything must yeah. be under one kind of governorship. So we, we, we get that. We understand this. I want to flip the script here a little bit, right? Someone who's plied your trade on both sides. Yeah. You kind of think, I know it's 30 million pounds, but it's 30 million pounds. But there are other benefits here. I think we've seen with the, the premiership that I think there are probably more Man U and Liverpool supporters in South Africa than there are in Manchester and Liverpool. Probably. There was a reason why Spurs were interested in doing this. How much of a knock is this for them, or is it just a, a blip on the radar and they move on? Um, you know, how much of a knock? They're the, the eighth most successful club around with, with, with deals and money. I don't think it's going to financially hurt them, hurt yeah. them or cripple them at all. You know, for a soccer perspective for South Africa, you know, they would have come across to do camps, they would have developed soccer. Soccer would have been definitely, definitely elevated. And we would have been a headline. 100%. A headline for months. But I think it's more, it's, it's just that people don't trust money being spent to the government yeah. and trust where it's going, and that's the problem, you know. The benefits might have been fantastic for South African football. It might have helped tourism in the big picture, but the timing of it and everything else just didn't feel right, mm. you know. And for me, um, I don't think it'll affect Spurs, but I definitely think it's rippled through South Africa. Yeah. If one of you have to say no Spurs doubt. is the eighth most successful team in the world, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, you I might, might cry. I might, might cry. <laughs> it's it's off, been okay. quite an emotional time for you. Um, <laughs> Freddie, in your view, um, should the department's budget be, be cut and redistributed mm. elsewhere? And if so, where? I wouldn't want to divert funds away from tourism. It's such a key sector in our economy. I think we just need to maybe go back to the drawing board and find more creative, more practical ways of how that money can be spent. Mm -hmm. I think what it has shown us, where there is a will to get something done, the money can be allocated. Mm. But we've just got to find the right programs and the right initiatives to allocate those funds. So taking money away from tourism is only going to hurt ourselves. Mm. I think we need to get more buy-in from those, the relevant stakeholders within tourism. And, and there's so many good ideas that could be put out there that could practically help boost tourism internationally for South Africa. 
completely. And we are, there is a flavor of the month. I get that. There is an opportunity. In your heart of hearts, right? I mean, I've watched you filled with confidence. I've watched you ready to take on the world. I've seen you despondent because it feels like this football game just doesn't yeah. support anyone playing it. What needs to be done then? Ten years down the line, buddy, we're still talking about legacy. We're still talking about development. Yeah. We know that we have the talent pool here. How does money need to be spent? Is it in the schools? Where do we need to focus on development so we don't have this conversation again? You know, for me, it's grassroots. Yeah. I, I think you've got to start spending money more on school level, uh, like the sporting side, if you're looking at developing sport. Um, grassroots football, you know, amateur football. Amateur football is falling badly, badly behind. Where are you finding talented kids nowadays that aren't being scouted in the right areas? Mm. So for me, I would distribute money to the lower leagues. Mississippi League, where I coach at the moment, but that's the development league. We yeah. force to play 523 players at any given stage. You know, you're forcing these youngsters through. So make sure the youngsters come to the right stage of their lives. They, they develop, they, they, they're ready for that, that, that experience. You're growing young people, not 100%, just players. Yeah. You know? um, so for me, I would definitely look at spending money more at grassroots at school. You know, going to some of the underprivileged schools, especially there, because there's so much talent there which Ooh. gets overlooked because it's not accessible or it's not the right um, breeding ground. Well, the timing is off that window. Yeah. It's so, so small. So small. You know, especially yeah, yeah. for you know, when boys get their first uh, test boost, their first growth spurt, that's when we really focus on them, focus on their speed, they focus on their strength, their, their development, because they've got that, that boost, that, that, mm. that second wind, you know, yeah, natural yeah. second wind. So I would look more to grassroots, absolutely, 100%. Well, kudos for you for Top doing that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so well yeah. done, man. Yeah. And then, Freddie, maybe if, if we could maybe revert back to you on, as you said earlier on, not taking away money from, from tourism, how then could be better utilised mm. and more creatively utilise this budget in order to still reap the benefits for the economy from exactly. a tourism point of view? Mm. Yes, um, there, there are quite a few what they would call flagship initiatives in South Africa. You've got Kirsten Bosch Botanical Gardens, you've got the Hector Peterson Memorial mm. uh, Museum, you've got um, Robin Island. How about potentially giving them grant funding? Say, yes, SA Tourism, we've got a hundred, we've got a billion rand, and you can apply for grant funding to promote those different flagship destinations yeah. within mm. South Africa. And then they can go out and market themselves. We've mm. got also sports teams, you know, the, the pro tiers, the spring box, and maybe even lower guys that don't get as much exposure like the hockey and the netball, saying, here we go, you guys are on an international platform. Yeah. Here's a bit of a budget for you. Go out and we can collaborate together and promote South Africa as a destination. From but the protest through, yeah. yeah. through, sure. through South Africans, right? Yeah. We're not spending money internationally. We're putting it through our own local development. In, yeah. It's coming through South Africans to grow South Africa. Yeah. Oh, and that ecosystem that's, needs a gentleman. That's it. Best chat of the year, man. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we talk about the Spurs, will be the sixth most popular side <laughs> in the world. I promise you that. We can climb it up. But uh, uh, one way or another, this has brought South Africans onto one page, which is great. We are all talking about our economy, talking about our tourism, looking at those pressure points. And there is so much to be proud of, even if you are a Spurs supporter. <laughs>